Ya, Emi Aidi. Welcome, Emi. Thank you very much for joining us. Emi, you are so creative. There's no question there. How do you keep so creative? How do you keep yourself being so creative? Well, if I say it now, then I don't have to continue my presentation. Ah, <laughs> that would be a spoiler alert. Okay, let's open up the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, Emi Aidi. Thank you. So, first we have to make sure everything is matching. Can I have the dark uh, skin of the LED? Yes, okay, perfect. And uh, let's see who is here. Can I have lights in the room a little bit? Yeah, thank you. Uh, before we start, hey, Tanya and Inka and everybody, all the friends. Hey, uh, I want you to do one thing for me before we start. I want you to look around. I want you to look who is in the room. If you need to stand up and look back, do it. Now you have a chance. Don't be shy. Just see who is, who is your neighbor, who is, who is here. Who are the people? Are they, how, what's their faces? How, are they tall? There is more men or more women? How they're dressed? What's their hairstyle? What's their clothes? Just look around, see it. You know, you know, you have everywhere. I think it's good to know who is with us, to know how much diversity we have in the room. So now, before we start, I want to get to know you a little bit more. I want to know who think that he or she is creative. Okay. Let me look at you. I want to I wanna remember that. All right. Okay. Okay. Hands down. Now, let me see who of you think that is like a generator of creativity. Like you can build your business or you have built your business on creativity. You like the master of creativity. Who is in the room? Who like that? Wow, that's nice. I like that. Okay. And last question. Who in your life have created something new? Who created something new? And I don't mean making babies. Yeah? We're going to speak about it later. <laughs> Just something new. Okay, let me come to you. Let me come to you. Okay. Show me, show me, show me. I want to see it. I want to see it. Where is my microphone? I want to know who are these people. I want to get to know you. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, I know what you created. Uh, okay. So, sir, can you share with us what is that you have created? Uh, I created a department of 50 experts uh -huh. managing 3 billion euro assets. Nice. You see, so I want you to remember one thing. This is a proof. Creativity is not only combined to artistry and to entertainment. Creativity is part of our life and has been part of every important movement in our society. Creativity is creating architecture, creating designs, creating concepts, creating beliefs, but also creating products and physical things. I want you to remember that because very often we are forgetting that. Thank you. And uh, let's see which great and brightest creators in our past have uh, inspired us to be where we are today. Creative people can be politicians, sound, uh, like Winston Churchill, or businesswomen like uh, Beretta Benz, who was known uh, for riding longest distance, or Stephen Hawking, also a creative person, or activist. I have a Martin Luther King, or multidisciplinary creative person, Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, you know, about his work, I'm not showing you his work because it's so expensive and because he's so famous, everybody knows it. I'm showing it to you for a different reason. Because he laid a path, he laid a bridge that we are using today. He showed us how closely art, science, medical, medical industries, and technology is connected. Without art and without artists, without imaginations, without visions, we cannot progress. And Leonardo is one of those proofs. Do you know how many jobs Leonardo had? Just guess in your head. Who thinks five? more than five? More than five? More than 10? More than 20? OK, look at this. Oh, something is happening. Somebody's touching me. Okay.
How do you feel, Amy? You can dance a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I, I need the music for that. <laughs> okay, so if you look behind me, would you imagine that in one lifetime, somebody can be like this broad, can bring so many areas? I've heard that there was this scientist in the Neuron um, Foundation. She said what we need is to look into the other industries. And I think this is a very great example. So now I want to say, uh, I want to speak about what, what happens with our creativity as we grow. What happens to it as we are going through our life. So in the beginning, it's something you all know, but I need to emphasize on it. I need you to see it because this is everything that is going to go through the rest of the story. So as we grow in the, when, in the beginning, we play. We are like, uh, we have the kid soul, so we play around, we experiment, we like to try different things, then we learn, we gain knowledge, we gain more and more information, and then something interesting happens. We get scored, we get grades, we start to compete with each other, we start to build our individualism. And then we go to job, and they want something else from us. They want us to cooperate, they want us to share knowledge, but we are taught differently in the school. So what happened? We need to get smart. We need to, you know, go around the system a little bit. And eventually, after fighting the system, we fall in line. What do you think that happens to creativity through this time? This is what happens. It goes up, and then in the moment of the conflict, it goes steep down. I want to start one more time from the very beginning, but from a little bit different perspective. Uh, this is the old age. This style is obsolete domestication age. This is how we used to treat our children in the past. What happens when we are born inside of our head, inside of our mind? First, we are a universe of possibilities. We have infinite options. And then we start to think too much. We start to think about what we are. We start to think about what we want to be. You start to think about what you think you should be. You start to think about what you think others think you are. And then you start to think about what you think others want you to be. And the layers just... And the layers... And the layers... And the layers... And the okay, never mind. Okay, thank you. I will put it in my pocket. Okay, of course it had to happen to me. Yeah, I know, it's just a little bit looser trousers than what they're used to have. So the layers just keep growing and growing. I call it onion concept. When you peel the onion, what's inside? There is nothing, because there doesn't need to be not nothing, because there is always something in the beginning. Why I'm showing you this picture is because the more importance in your life you give to these layers, it's called the society concept. The more you emphasize on it, the more you focus on it, the, more, the further you get from your core. And why I'm showing you the core? Because that's the only original thing that we have. That's our DNA, that's our source, that's our beginning. Everything else is just expectations, society expectations that we impress into our children. They always ask me like where I get inspiration and I always say I get it when I travel. Why? This is a proof. Because when you travel, and I don't mean luxury traveling, like five-star hotel, okay? I mean like adventurous traveling, when you actually meet the local people, when you meet, you know, the Maori in New Zealand, or the Balinese Hindu dances, the rituals that we visit every year. This social concept is trembled. It's like, ah, it doesn't really work anymore because the social expectations are different. And then for a little while, you're able to reconnect back to the core. So I want, to, I want to now speak a little bit about, about your children, about uh, our teams, about our employees, about the younger people. So who in the room was born between 1980 and 2000? Okay, people, I'm sorry for you. You're going to get some heat now. So uh, millennials, they are super lazy, you know. They don't, take it, they don't keep attention for too long. Uh, they... Uh, they're always connected because uh, like, to be uh, multitasking is their human right. Uh, they never talk to anybody who is around. They always talk to somebody who is far. And uh, they are super stressed when you call them out, when you give them criticism. They avoid criticism even of their own, of all of the others. 
So I want, to, I want you to think about this. These are the prejudice. These are the society prejudice. So who is employing millennials? Who of you have millennials in your companies? You know, it's funny, it's funny, like think about it. They say like they, are like, they don't want to work, but they are the greatest working force today. By 2025 in the United States alone, it will represent 75% of working power. So I think it's kind of important to understand what's happening in this generation. Uh, we also call it fragile generation, and I want to focus on it because it's not only important for your employees, it's also important for your kids. Why fragile? So, uh, in the past, sorry, I will put, go back. In the past, uh, when you go, uh, you, you have like, I want to combine 1999 and 2019, yeah, the 20 years, like what, what changed, what happened in this time? Uh, in the past, when you were in the village, you didn't have so much anonymity. You were facing, you know, your neighbors and so on. Imagine that you go to the pub, you get drunk, and then in the morning as you go home, you throw up in the front of your house. In the morning, your neighbor is like, hey, well, you made this mess on, 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 in the front? Well, why? And you were like, oh, you know, somebody put something in my drink or whatever you say. But you were facing one thing that in today's world of social media, you don't have to face. You're facing truth about yourself. So what happens now if all of us... Yesterday I heard a very interesting term. It was said, it, they say digital twin. I call it avatar. So what happens if each of us now... So tell me, who doesn't have an avatar in the room? Everybody has it, right? You don't? You're, out, you're unplugged from the social. Good. You know, like in my, in my family... People sometimes unplug, and then within a year, they always plug in. That's why they never delete your account, because they know you're going to come in, come back. So now what, is, what, what does it do to the society? So uh, I calculated, I found a research where they say that in the past, there was approximately 20 to 25 interactions that we have every day, physical interactions. Yeah. Now, in the past also, when you, get, when you have your digital twin, it would only be like politicians, you know, like famous people, uh, in the newspapers, on the television, and we call it like reputation. So when this digital twin would get some heat, you know, when it was like criticized or when it was drawn through the mud, you know, they would, they would get stressed. Today, our kids have this digital twin and the digital twin gets heat. You know, that's why we have the internet bullying and so on. So what does it make in the year 2019. I was trying to find some research, but I only could find my own. So my interactions, daily interactions of me and my avatar with the world is 5,000 a day. So it's a lot. Now, everybody gets it. So now what, what does it make with importance? With importance of uh, what we used to think about us and what we think about us today. Now, we have tools. We have tools to manipulate our image. So in the past, our biggest tool is a smile, you know, or get a ton of makeup, you know, and then go there in the world and make people believe that you are stronger, smarter, uh, shyer, whatever you want. So how about the tools of today? They get, they get a little bit twisted. Let's see this. Have you heard of these augmentation apps? You can change anything. Oh, yeah. You can change your nose, change your chin, change your face, change your skin, change your clothes, change your boobs, change your ass. So, what do you think that this is doing to the kids? Already they are so fragile, and then they get these apps, and we tell them, you're not good enough. You need to change. You need to alternate, because we all need to be perfect. In France, there is a law that in the fashion magazines, you cannot use models who don't have a minimal amount of fat because they are aware of the mental health of their people. So this is the shift. Now, for some of you who don't know much about social uh, networks, like the gentleman, this one, uh, this is just some few information, like there is 100 million pictures uploaded on Instagram every day. Uh, and I'm going to give you a story. There is a, in a room, I have, I have a... All my employees are here somewhere uh, in Jet Productions. And I have all millennials, you know. It's not easy, I have to tell you. But, well, with, with the exception of finance director, no, they, they should not be millennials. And uh, 
there is a Simon. Simon is somewhere here, and he's 18. So he came to me, and he was like, ah, you know, like I have some problems with my girl. Uh, you know, we text a lot. We don't have time to see each other. And she didn't send me an emoji in a week. Man, I don't know how she feels. I was like, okay. And then I started to talk more about the emoji thing because I kind of like it. I use it a lot, but I realized I'm, I use it wrong. I need kind of dictionary because he also told me that when you send somebody a blink of an eye, it means like something really bad. He, like, so he says, if she sends me a blink of an eye, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break up. So there, that's so much distant in the language between the generations, you know. So it's really kind of hard, and we really need to put some work in it to be able to bring it a little bit closer again. So what used to be uh, confidence in the past, now it creates unconfidence. And don't, don't be wrong, because they might appear confident, but the confidence is not really there. And if you want to be creative, why I'm saying this, you need just few things. One, you need to be brave. Like, when you told me that you, you created a team, you know, when you have this first idea to do something like that, uh, it takes balls to, to be able to, to roll with something new, with something original that no one has created before, and then to share it with other people. It's, it's, it needs, you need to be brave. Another thing, you need to have a little child in yourself. You need to be playful. You need to just play, you know, bring, come back to that core. And then one more thing, you need, you need uh, to be generous. And why? Because there is a very strong relation between creativity and time. And time is something that we don't have. Now, re uh, just recently there was introduced this um, feature on your phone, screen time. Anybody, did, do you ever watch your screen time? It's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's really cool to see. I'm not just watching mine. I'm checking everybody else always. Oh, show me your screen time. So we just, I just want to compare. It's kind of funny. So this is a proof. Like this, this phone is a door. So every time you open it, you are entering a digital universe. Every time you close it, you're stepping out of it. Now, if you imagine before we have, all have these, these, these boxes in our pocket, we had more time. We had time to interact. You were on the tram, you, were, you didn't know what to do, so you look and you maybe talk even to the people. Today we don't do that anymore. So this is something that's also doing something to have a creativity. Because if you want to create, it's very personal. It's kind of intimate thing. You need to be offline. Then when you create something, you want to collaborate or you share it, you go online. But when you're online all the time, I don't think it's really good for your creativity. Uh, and one more thing, millennials, are also the only generation that have to teach not just their kids, but also their parents. So this takes even more time away from our lives. So we always speak about all the things that have changed, but there is one thing that haven't changed. They say that human body, we, our evolution is not exponential, but I think there is one part of us that can match that speed, and that is our mind on our psychic abilities, psychological abilities. So we always love to let our mind to wander. You know, we love to dream, we love to read and imagine. And uh, even though it was different, you know, but at least today we don't always, we don't all have to look into the same newspaper, you know, so it's good. We can choose, you know, we can, we can see it anywhere. So I call this concept uh, two worlds. So the first world, we always knew it. The second world is the one inside of our heads. So in the past, when I speak about something and you speak about something, we can speak about the same thing, but we will imagine something different. So we use painting. But the digital world, it gave us so much more ability to share. And not only to share, but also to work vast distances and create together. And what will happen when this second world will be fully developed? Then they will integrate. And this is what we call hyper-reality. Take a look at this. Green. Nice. Green. Más tarde. Apúrate si quieres una buena calificación. Voy lo más rápido que puedo. ¿Has pensado en correr? Es saludable y eficiente. 
Seguro que no hay más trabajos disponibles. Yo estudié para ser profesora y estoy haciendo mercados. Y además puedes quedarte con los puntos de fidelización. Eres una monje afortunada. Tienes que confiar en la aplicación. Te sientes inspirada. Gracias. Chao. ¿Quién soy yo? No, no es lo que quiero decir. ¿Para dónde voy? No. Puedo volver a empezar. Olvídalo. Estoy libre de mi ira. Estoy libre de mi tristeza. El amor es mi tristeza. Adiós. Hola. Wow. What do you think of that? You know, in today's world, the trend among the millennials is to pay for not to see advertisement. The outcome of this movement, of this trend, are platforms like Netflix, YouTube, uh, music, uh, and other platforms, HBO, whatever. You know, so this is the world. But the bad thing is that eventually there will be some people who won't be able to afford it, and then they might be attacked by all this, uh, all this advertising. Uh, but let's go, uh, let's go back to Czech Republic. Uh, well, who is, who, is, who is not from Czech Republic in the hall? Wow, there's a lot. Okay, okay, okay. So this might, might or might not be new to you. Okay, can you click for me the next slide? Because uh, I'm, I'm sure you all know that Czech people are very creative in all different kind of ways, you know? Uh, they... <laughs> Somebody's laughing, so you probably know uh, from your own experience. So yes, we can be. There's also doomed creativity, you know, like when we uh, try to um, like thin alcohol with methanol, and we have few hundreds of people who turn blind, you know, or we try to sell the dead horse meat instead of beef, or we build the most expensive highway in the world, you know, and I enjoy it every time I go to Brno. So that's also part of our creativity. But uh, I want to speak about the positive creativity. We've heard about, you know, the contact lenses from Mr. Wichterle, we have Dvořák, we have Čapek, we have, uh, we have a lot of people from the past, but we also have people who are, who are successful, who are uh, today living, like you might heard about Josef Kabany, who was appointed as a chief designer of Rolls Royce, or you might have heard of the boys uh, Jan Hlavsky, Hrinchak, or Beck, who are behind the game Beat Saber, who, which is the now the most successful game in the industry and is bringing tons of people to enter the world of VR. Uh, in the uh, in a comparison, let's say China Czech Republic, in art. In China, the biggest success you can achieve is to be the same like your master, or to get as close as possible to your master. In Czech Republic, this would be to surpass, to exceed your master. You know, this is the different, you know, we say sharing is caring, they are more like copying is loving. Different concepts, but you know, this is why I think in Czech Republic we can achieve a lot through creativity. There was one Canadian lottery that tried to test their product in Czech Republic, and they said, like, uh, if Czechs can't hack it, then nobody can. So that's also an interesting uh, kind of reputation that we have in the world. So what uh, kills creativity? What? Uh-huh. OK, wait. OK, one, two, all right, you've heard that. All right, so what kills creativity? Now it is your time, because you are the leaders. And actually, we are all killing it. We are all killing it in our work, in our workplace. You know, this, the, the, the proof is that why startups are not uh, happening inside of organizations, why they are taken out, because they need to create something new. And in the rigid structures that we still hold so close to, they can't. You know, so 
from me, uh, the message is don't enforce like rigid rules to entire organizations, to all the teams. Because you might, you might gain a little bit more from the 90% of the people, but you are going to kill the creativity in the 10% of the people. And the thing, the goal that, that, that is happening in the time of exponential era, it happens within the 10%, within the, within the realm of the creative. Uh, in, when you are in US, I work a lot in US, I work there mostly between 2010 and 2015, 16. Uh, when you are a, st are a startup and you're coming for funding, they ask you, have you bankrupted? And if you say no, you're not going to look like stronger to them. They're going to think of you less because they think to go through that trauma, it makes you stronger. And in Czech Republic, what we are doing, we're stigmatizing mistakes. We are afraid to, 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 to say that we made a mistake. And because this is how we were in the past, and we're just inheriting it and passing it on to new generations. So that's, I think, what kills creativity the most. Also, uh, fear of leading through vision. Because vision and prediction, two different things. Yeah? Prediction is not a vision, even though sometimes it is. So uh, as you know, uh, all this summit is about exponential growth. And it's about linear and exponential. So I want to say two things, like innovation, you've heard many times today that it's like one plus one is two. Creation, you heard like zero can equals one. So for me, the linear is the innovation. Innovation, it's not going to be enough. We innovate, it's a natural process. We innovate all the time. It's not, you know, it's not like uh, flight to the moon, but to create something new, it's, it's I think very important. And I think that uh, even though I hear a lot of complaints about, you know, when millennials in the office, they come and they say, hey, we want to have some, you know, free time, we want to have some more time. The creativity is the leapfrog. That is what is going to make, make us jump up. So when next time some employee comes to you and asks you uh, for home office or maybe to leave at 3 o'clock, you better let them go because maybe they're going to create something or maybe they're going to go party. Yeah, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, it's a party on a different time zone. Have you heard of those? No? Do you know Marshmallow? Yeah. So he made a party like that. And that party was visited by 10 million people on different time zones. I will show you part of it. I think it's hilarious because these people, they also buy costumes to be interesting and to meet each other. And each individual character in that animation is a human being. And they are having fun. Marshmallow up there. All right, so so this is uh, this is a future party. You know, sometimes you can stay in the comfort of your home, drink whatever booze you want, and then still have a fun with a like world known DJ. Just for your information, uh, the sales of Avatar costume in the world is in hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, so people actually go to the virtual world, go to the digital universe, and buy clothes. And there is a big market about it. There's even uh, one cryptocurrency to just go into, into this area. So because I promised, um, we will also, I will also give some hints how we can work on our creativity. You can take a picture of this slide. This is uh, the 10 best books about uh, creativity. And it might help you to be more creative. It might help you to move you forward. Of course, each book is very different. So, so you, may, you need to find something that's going to resonate with you. And if you have kids, I want to show you one more thing which is really hilarious, and that is a game called Everything. This game is great because it trains your perception. It, it, it helps the kids without rules to just see everything. And whatever resonates with them, what creates urge that it matters in the nature, that's where they should go, you know? Because what we say, we say our kids what matters, you know? 
But what matters to them is connected to the core that I spoke earlier about. So I think this, this game is, is really something. So I will show you a little bit. The health of our organism depends on the continuance of this battle. What is, in other words, conflict at one level of magnification is harmony at a higher level. Now, could it possibly be, therefore, that we, with all our problems, conflicts, neuroses, sicknesses, political outrages, wars, tortures, and everything that goes on in human life... Okay, so, so uh, there you can magnify, you can go to the universe and see the whole universe, but you can go down into the molecular level and see things from very close up. So it's interesting, the perspective. It's something that the digital world is allowing us, it's enabling us to see, to ex actually experience once we have the VR Googles on. So now to the end, uh, it is certain that creativity comes from diversity. It's very important for us not to close ourselves from the outside world. It's very important for us to support the discussion, not just interdisciplinary, this is a must, you've heard it many times today and yesterday, but also between generations, because that's, I think, where we are lacking a lot. And uh, because uh, my first part of my life was, was, uh, was dance and choreography, even though everybody thinks this is my job, uh, it's not anymore. It's something that I love to do. I uh, prepare for you a short video of uh, these different creative within the movement. Why I like to bring these two worlds together? It, because there is so many similarities. When you go, and why I speak about this is because in art, among artists, it's not always important what we create, but also why we create it. That motive behind something that we do is very important. So that's why I want to, in the end, bring you to the source uh, that I have behind, uh, behind me. So, uh, as you know, I was born in Czech Republic, uh, in, uh, in Liberec, in a small city, and uh, the environment uh, in the 80s was not easy. My father, who is here sitting in the a, in a fourth row, he uh, left when I was four, and uh, he was captive in Nigeria through a political, uh, um, political revolution. Uh, for 18 years. So when internet was invented, I went online, and the first thing I did is I was searching for my name, because there was no other Yemi Akiyemi Dele in uh, Liberec, neither in Czech Republic, and I was searching for one and a half years. So internet is a very important part of my life, because after one and a half years, I was able to uh, find our family name in Nigeria, in one of the universities, and I reconnected with my father. It took about four or five years more for him to be able to visit Czech Republic again, and another few years before I could move my family with my uh, brother and two sisters to Czech Republic. Today we are all living in the same place, and uh, it was like a dream come true for me. And I thank to that uh, to creative industry, to, to creativity. Because to be with my mom in Limburets and then to pass this vast distance from, from uh, from there, we were, we were living in a house that was abandoned by Germans when, when they were moved, moved out and uh, only had uh, cold water in the tap. And our bathroom was on a different floor, two floors down. No shower, no bath. We had a plastic bath. We would have to mix the hot and cold water to be able to take a bath. And if I imagine that in one lifetime, this is the huge, huge, huge journey that, that we all are going through. I know each of you have, have some story. I think it's amazing. So my message to you is, even though they told us and they want us to believe that we are not creative, because in the 70s, 80s, 90s, we need to perform. This is a different time. Times have changed. We are creative, each of us. So next time when I'm here, I hope everybody's hand is going to be up. Because creativity is our biggest gift and it's our biggest heritage. In every important milestone of a human history, there was a creator. Thank you for your attention. Please, could you give us a piece of advice? What to do if we feel that we lost creativity, how to restart creativity, start to travel, change team, change job, what to do? First, uh, stop thinking because 
if we think we lose it. You can't lose it because, because we give birth to a child, we make this, we make that. It's, it's proven. We all have it. It's just forgetting it. And if you want to gain it again, either do something different. Just do something different. Don't follow, don't be cycled. Don't follow the same safe rules. Give yourself a time and do something different, and it will come back. Says, hear me 80. Thank you very much.